Hello everyone and welcome to Skein Spider. In today's video we're going to be crocheting a mini axolotl. This is actually the second pattern in my Popcorn Stitch mini series. If you would like to check out the first pattern which was a mini chameleon there will be a link for that down in the description. But if you would like to make an axolotl first grab your hooks and let's get started. To make a popcorn stitch mini axolotl you're going to need a 3.5 millimeter hook, scissors, stitch markers, a needle, some stuffing, a pair of 14 millimeter safety eyes as well as eight ply yarn in two different colors. I'm going to be crocheting this axolotl with this acrylic eight ply purple yarn and in addition to crocheting the pattern today we're also going to be playing yarn chicken. So if you see a color change abruptly at some point in this video that is the reason why I ran out of this purple yarn but I'm hoping we'll have enough. The head and body for this axolotl is crocheted as one piece and we're going to begin with the head. For round one create a magic circle and then put six single crochet into the magic circle. So I've done my magic circle go into the center of that one two three four five and six close that up round two is going to be one single crochet And then one increase and an increase is just two single crochet in the same stitch. So I've gone into the next stitch. I'm going to do one single crochet. I'm going back into the same stitch and doing a second. We're going to repeat this one single crochet, one increase twice more or three times in total. One single crochet, one increase. one single crochet and our final increase. Round three is going to be two single crochet followed by an increase repeated three times. So one, two and increase and then just repeat that. For round four, we're going to begin with three single crochet. One, pop my stitch marker back in. Then I'm going to do two and three single crochet. After this third single crochet, we're going to do three increases in a row going to put an increase in the next stitch, one and two in the same stitch, an increase in the stitch after that, and then in the third stitch we're going to do another increase. For the rest of this round we're going to repeat that pattern again, we're going to do three single crochet and then three increases. At the end of round four, we should now have 18 stitches in total in our round. And then round five is just going to be 18 single crochet all the way around. Round six is two single crochet, one increase repeated six times. Round seven is 24 single crochet. Round eight is three single crochet, one increase repeated six times. Round 
After round eight, we should now have a total of 30 stitches in our round. And then both rounds nine and 10 are each going to be 30 single crochet. Round 11 is going to be three single crochet, one decrease repeated six times. We're going to start off with our three single crochet, two and three, and then we're going to do an invisible decrease. To do that, you're going to go under the front loops of the next two stitches, and the front loop is the part of the stitch that is closest to you, this section here. We're going to go under the first front loop, then straight under the second front loop. At this point, you're going to yarn over, pull through both of those front loops, first one and the second one. And at this point, you should have two loops on your hook. Yarn over for a final time and pull through both of those loops. And that's how you do an invisible decrease. We're going to repeat three single crochet, one decrease five more times or six in total for the round. Round 12 is going to be two single crochet, one decrease repeated six times. For round 13, we're going to start off with three single crochet. One. Then two and three. And then we're going to do three increases in a row again, like we did earlier in the head. So we're going to do an increase in the next stitch, one, two single crochet, an increase in the stitch after that, and two, and then another increase. That's our first lot of three increases. The rest of round 13 is going to be six single crochet, another three increases in a row, and then we're going to finish with three single crochet. After round 13, you should have 24 stitches in your round. And in round 14, what we're going to do is create the popcorn stitch legs. Now the full pattern for round 14 reads eight single crochet, one popcorn stitch, six single crochet, one popcorn stitch, and then eight single crochet. But we are going to go through this round slowly. So if you don't know how to crochet a popcorn stitch, you can watch how to do that. We're going to begin round 14 with the eight single crochet. One. And eight. After that eighth single crochet, we're going to do our first popcorn stitch. And to make this a little bit easier to understand, or I hope it'll be easier to understand, I'm going to break the popcorn stitch down into steps. So the first step of the popcorn stitch is to put five double crochet in the same stitch. To create a double crochet, you're first going to yarn over. You're then going to go into the next stitch, yarn over once more and pull through. At this point, you should have three loops on your hook, one, two, and three. You're going to yarn over again, pull through just the first two loops, first and then the second. And now you should have only two loops left on your hook. Yarn over for a final time and pull through both of those loops. That's our first double crochet. We're going to do this four more times, all in the same stitch. Once more, yarn over, go into the same stitch, yarn over and pull through. You should have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through just the first two loops, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through those two loops. That's double crochet number two. Yarn over, go into the same stitch again, yarn over, pull through, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through the first two only, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through those remaining two. That's three, do that twice more and then we'll go on to the second step of the popcorn stitch. Mm -hmm. 
Now that I have five double crochet all in the same stitch, I'm then going to pull up with my hook. So I leave a fairly large loop here. And when you make this loop, you want to be careful not to tug on your working yarn. So this part here that's still attached to your skein, because we don't want that to pull through. If it does accidentally, or if you do accidentally pull that out and you undo a double crochet, just go back, redo the ones that you need to, and then repeat this step again. Pull up with your hook so you have a nice large loop. What we're going to do now is find double crochet number one that we did. So you can just jump back to the start. If you're having trouble figuring out which one that is exactly, you're a bit confused by stitches, all you need to do is count backwards from the last one that we did. So the last one is here where our large loop is. We're going to go five, four, three, two, and one. And in this first double crochet, you're going to take your hook, you're going to insert it under the V of the stitch at the top here, from front to back. So I'm pushing the head of my hook in from under the front loop and out past the back loop. The next step is going to be to take this large loop that we left and you're going to place that on the head of your hook. Just hold it in place with your finger if you need to. And at this point when the loop is on your hook, you're going to take your working yarn and now tighten it up. So you want this loop to be nice and tight against the head of your hook. When that's done, you're going to take this loop that's on your hook and we're going to pull it through the first double crochet as if we were making a slip stitch. So I'm just going to pull that through like a slip stitch. At the end of all that, all we need to do now is chain one. So I'm going to yarn over and pull through the loop on my hook. It is really important that you don't forget this step, this chain one, because in the next round, we're going to need this chain one to work into so we can continue working in the round. That is how we make our popcorn stitch. Now we need to do the next bit of round 14, which is just six single crochet. With the popcorn stitch, because they're rather bulky, sometimes it can be difficult to see which stitch you need to work into next. So what I would recommend you do is just nudge your stitch aside a little bit with your thumb and find the next free stitch you need to work into. So you're going to put your loop close to the head of your hook and then you're going to bring your hook down to that next free stitch and single crochet into it. That's the first one we need to do. We're going to do two, three, four, five, and number six. And then we're going to do our second popcorn stitch. Again, we begin with five double crochet in the same stitch yarn over go into your stitch yarn over pull through three loops on your hook yarn over pull through the first two yarn over pull through the remaining two do that four more times for five double crochet in total two and five pull up with your hook leaving a large loop you're going to find double crochet number one counting backwards if you need to, five, four, three, two, one. Insert your hook under the first double crochet from front to back. Place the large loop on the head of your hook and then you're going to pull on your working yarn to tighten that loop up. Pull the loop that you just placed on your hook through the first double crochet and then chain one. And that is the second and final popcorn stitch we need to do in this round. I know I went through this one a little bit faster than the first. If you're still a little bit confused, I will have a timestamp for the popcorn stitch down in the description. So just pop down there, you can click on that and it'll take you right back to where we did this one, but a little bit slower. After we've done the second popcorn stitch, we're going to finish off round 14, which is just eight single crochet, like we did with our first popcorn stitch. Just nudge this one gently aside so you can see the next stitch you need to work into. Have your loop at close to the head of your hook and you're just going to bring that down and single crochet into your next stitch. One. And eight. At this point, take out your hook and I'm just going to secure my end with another stitch marker because we're going to insert the safety eyes and begin stuffing the head. 
Before you grab your eyes, make sure your axolotl is facing the right way. The legs go at the bottom, so make sure they're facing downwards. Just going to pop that there. And where did I put my safety eyes? Oh, right here, literally right in front of me. Okay, what we're going to do now is insert these 14 millimeter safety eyes between rounds six and seven of the head. So start at round one and count out. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then once again, making sure that your axolotl is positioned correctly so the legs are facing down, we're going to place one eye on either side of the head. And also, this is just a recommendation. You can use smaller or larger eyes and you can place them wherever you'd like. You don't have to place them between rounds six and seven. So just have a play around. And before you put the backs on, see what looks best to your eyes. So however you want your axolotl to look, that's what you can go with. And I'm just doing a check. I don't know if you can see that, but my axolotl is a little bit lopsided. So you can see how this eye, hopefully, <laughs> is aligned with this leg, but this one doesn't quite match up. So what I'm going to do is just move this one. And that is a bit better. So once your eyes are in the position that you think looks best, you can go ahead and put the backs on. Oh, that one didn't click very well. And after that, we're going to add the stuffing just to the head here. After doing round 14 and our popcorn stitches, we should still have 24 single crochet or 24 stitches in our round. Rounds 15 all the way through to 19 are each going to be 24 single crochet. However, round 15 can be a little bit more tricky than the others just because we need to work into the chain one of the popcorn stitch. And if it's something you've never done before, it can be a little bit confusing the first time. So we're going to start off by doing eight single crochet of the 24 that we need to do because in round 14 we started with eight single crochet before we did the popcorn stitch and eight the next stitch that we need to work into is going to be the chain one from the popcorn stitch so if i bring this up nice and close focus up this is that chain. So here's our popcorn stitch and this is our chain one. So this is where we're going to work into next. That's going to be stitch number nine of our round. One single crochet in there. In round 14, between our popcorn stitches, there was six single crochet. So that's what we're going to do next. After those six, we're going to work into the chain one of the popcorn stitch again, which is there. So I'm going to single crochet into that. And then we should have eight single crochet left because in round 14, after we did our second and final popcorn stitch, we finished with eight single crochet. And eight. And we should still have 24 stitches total in our round at this point. That was round 15. We're going to do rounds 16, 17, 18, and 19 of just 24 single crochet. And they're going to be a little bit easier because we don't have to worry about working into the popcorn stitches. In round 20, we're going to do our next set of legs. We're going to begin this time with nine single crochet. And nine. Then in the next stitch, we're going to do our first popcorn stitch. Begin by doing those five double crochet in the same stitch. 
pull up with your hook insert your hook into the first double crochet that you did place that loop on the head of your hook tighten it up pull through the first double crochet chain one and then we're going to nudge that stitch aside and crochet six single crochet and six now we're going to do our second popcorn stitch And then we're going to finish off the round with seven single crochet. And seven. And just as a reminder, if you need a slow down step-by-step -step guide for the popcorn stitch, there will be a timestamp for that in the description. Round 21 is also going to be 24 single crochet. And exactly like we did for round 15, we're going to be working into the stitches of the body, but also into the chain ones of each popcorn stitch. Round 22 is six single crochet, one decrease repeated three times. Round 23 is 21 single crochet. Round 24 is five single crochet, one decrease repeated three times. At the end of round 24, we're going to stop and add the stuffing to the body. From this point on, what we're going to be doing is crocheting the tail. With the tail, I don't add any stuffing to it. Instead, I leave the stuffing to finish here after round 24. And then when I crochet the tail, I press that flat. If you would rather add stuffing, you can do that. Just know that it is going to change the, it is going to change the shape of the tail a little bit. Round 25 is seven single crochet, one decrease repeated twice. Round 26 is six single crochet and a decrease repeated twice. Round 27 is five single crochet and a decrease repeated twice. Round 28 is four single crochet and a decrease repeated twice. At the end of round 28, we should have 10 stitches in our round. And then rounds 29 through to 31 are 10 single crochet. If you would prefer here, you can just do 30 single crochet consecutively. Round 32 is three single crochet and a decrease repeated twice. Both rounds 33 and 34 are eight single crochet. And like we've just done, if you'd rather do your single crochet consecutively, you can just do 16 here. Round 35 is our final round and we're going to do two single crochet, one decrease and repeat that twice. To finish off, we're going to cut a short tail 
then how much yarn did I have left? Let's see. That much. Ooh. So we won at yarn chicken today. But what we're going to do now is just pull up with our hooks and then grab a needle. Thread the tail end through your needle. Try not to drop it, that helps. Then we're going to go under the front loops of each of the last six stitches. Start behind the front loop and you're going to push your needle under it and forward towards you. One. And six. And then you're going to pull on that tail end to close up the hole. Once that's done, insert your needle straight back in through the center of the last round and then you're just going to weave it through the body to hide it. If you would like, because we didn't add stuffing to the last part of the tail, the stuffing stops about here. If you would like to add a kind of barrier between the stuffed section and the non-stuffed section, what you can do is use this tail end to sew these stitches together. I don't do that because I find the stuffing just tends to mostly stay in place anyway, but that is an option if you would like to keep them separated. I'm just going to weave this in through the body. And when that's done, just cut away the excess. And with the head and the body complete, what we're going to do now is add the features. We're going to add the frill to the tail and we're going to add the gills to each side of the head. We're going to start off by making the tail frill. To do that, you're going to grab your second color and I'm using this dark purple yarn. You're going to count your rounds until you reach between rounds 24 and 25 and you can start from the head or the tail of the piece, it doesn't really matter. So we finished on round 35 and I'm just going to count backwards. Once you find rounds 24 and 25, you're going to insert your hook and you want to insert it centered between the sides of the tail. So when we've pressed the tail flat, we turn the axle all over so we can see the bottom and my hook is centered, let me push it through there, centered between these two parts, so this side and this side. Once you've got your hook in, you're going to take your yarn and I would recommend leaving a bit of a tail here so you can weave it in later. If you leave it too short, that becomes difficult. Then we're going to yarn over and pull the yarn through and then slip stitch to join it. From this point, we're going to crochet into this space between our rounds, all the way around the underside of the tail, up the tip here, and then back across the top. We're going to do one single crochet and then three half double crochet in the next stitch all the way around. So you're just going to repeat that for as many times as you want. The slip stitch we just did does not count as a stitch in our round. So I'm going to work back into that same space and do a single crochet. And then in the next space is where I'm going to do my three half double crochet. To do a half double crochet, you're going to yarn over, go into your stitch, or in this case, the space between our rounds, and then yarn over and pull through, and you should have three loops on your hook yarn over and pull through all three loops. So that was one half double crochet. I'm going to do a second and a third in that same space. Then in the next stitch or space between the rounds, I'm going to do a single crochet. And then I'm going to do in the next stitch, three half double crochet in the same stitch. And you're just going to continue this all the way around until you reach rounds 24 or between rounds 24 and 25 on the top as well. If you would like to change this tail frill pattern, you can. First, you can start either closer to the head or closer to the end of the tail. So you don't have to start at this round 24, 25 point. You can extend that if you would like. And the second thing you can do to customize this is to use different stitches. So for example, I'm using the single crochet and the half double crochet 
in the same stitch. You could use double crochet in the same stitch. You could do, I don't know, a pico stitch or something. You can customize that to your preferences. So decide what you're going to do and then crochet that. When you've crocheted all the way around back to the top, you're going to cut a tail, pull up with your hook and grab your needle and then just weave these two ends into the body to secure them. You need to thread that through, go straight back into the stitch we first worked into and just begin weaving it through the body. Next, we're going to tackle the gills. You're going to insert your hook into a space below the eye on the side of the head. So how far back you want to go is going to depend on how you want your axolotl to look. And keep in mind, we're going to be doing three gills on each side. So for this side, which as it's facing me this way is the right side, we're going to work from the bottom gill up. So you want to start three stitches down because we're going to do one gill in each stitch. I'm going to do mine here. You're going to insert your hook into the space between the stitches like we did when we joined the tail frill. And then we're going to bring in our yarn and we're joining the same way that we did previously too. We're going to yarn over, pull the yarn through and then slip stitch to join. Each gill is going to begin with a single crochet and we're going to do that into the same stitch we just slip stitched into. And then you're going to begin chaining. How many you chain is going to depend how long your gill is. So for this one, I'm going to chain four. Sorry, I'm going to chain five. I'm going to single crochet four. One, two, three, four, and five. Starting in the second chain from the hook, I'm going to work four single crochet back down the chain. three and four. four. From that point, I'm going to single crochet one stitch up. So I'm going to insert my hook in there and go one stitch up. Single crochet. And then we're going to create the second gill. So you want to begin chaining again I'm going to be chaining six this time, but once more, you can make this as long as you like. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Starting in the second chain from the hook, I'm going to single crochet five times back down. I'm going to single crochet five times back down the chain. And five. Then we're once more going to jump one stitch up. So I'm single crocheting one stitch up. And this time I'm going to repeat the pattern I did for the bottom gill. I'm going to chain five and then work four single crochet back down the chain. To finish off, we're just going to slip stitch into the head. And you're going to cut the yarn and we'll weave these two ends in like we did for the two tail the two tail ends of the tail but before I do that I like to crochet my second gill this second gill which we're going to work on the left side or the left side as it's orientated now and you want to start from the top and work your way down so what you'll have to do is look at your axolotl from front on Judge where our last gill that we did, which is this one here, where that finishes. And then you're going to start the left side gills in the same spot. So I'm going to make sure I've got them in the same round. So I need to go back one. 
And then once your hook's in place, you're going to crochet this second set of gills the same way we crocheted this first set. But once again, we're working from the top down this time. Once that's done, I'm just going to weave in these ends. And there we go, mini axolotl all finished. And that's going to do it for this video. If you have any suggestions for popcorn stitch mini animals, leave those down in the comments below. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will be back next week with a new video.